Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm sitting at my kitchen table with my National Trust passports. Um, you may have seen video one, two, three, and four where I talked about the properties I visited in those passports. In this one, we're going to do my fifth passport. Um, so you can see the evolution of passports. Um, this is my sixth one, which isn't complete, and that's my girlfriend's one. Um, nowadays, they come in three or four different colours. So you can get them in green, grey, pink. Um, so let's see where I went on my fifth passport. So let's have a look. Starts in 2012. First property visited was Saltram. That's down near Plymouth. So I remember it to be a big Georgian house. Um, they had all the sort of games of the era out on the gardens to play. So I just remember walking around the garden. I don't think it was a huge estate, not as big as some of the ones I've been to, but you know, it's been a good day there. So that's Saltram was the first one. Now the next one was Cotteel House in, in, um, it's in Cornwall but we accessed it from Devon. What we did, we went on the train from Plymouth up the incredibly scenic Gunnis Lake branch. It's got to be one of the most exciting railways you can go on. Because what happens, you go along the Cornish Main Line, and I know it's meant to be about passports, so I've got to tell you this, this railway, it's worth doing if you're down in Devon. You go along the Cornish Main Line, and just before you go over the Royal Albert Bridge, the line branches off um, to the north, but then it goes underneath the railway, and then it comes round and takes you under the Royal Albert Bridge, and um, you run up the Tamar Estuary, and you go over quite a few bridges on the way, um, passing through... Um, Beer Ferries, and then when you get to Beer Alston, the train reverses and goes down what used to be the Callington branch. Um, it was a line, it wasn't built by Brunel, it wasn't Great Western, it was an independent railway. Um, the line at, at, at Beer Alston used to carry on, they keep talking about reopening it through to Oakhampton, where the Dartmoor Railway is, and eventually down to Exeter. But if you go on the train, you reverse at Beer Alston, and you're on the train, you're going at about 15 miles an hour and it's slowly working its way down the hill and then when you get to Cowstock you go over the most impressive viaduct ever over the river and you get amazing views and then after, and then there's um, Cowstock Station and the train carries on up to Gunners Lake which I have done on a different visit. So got off at um, Cowstock and walked to Cotteel, it's quite a long walk but I like a good long walk. Walked to Cotteel, fascinating house. Um, I remember walking around the grounds, the gardens were lovely, and we went down to the mill, and um, the miller, she had just made these scones, like she'd just ground the corn and made the scones, she, and it just started to rain, and um, she said, would you like one? So I said, oh, yes, please, and then some other people were in there, and um, she made us a cup of tea, because it, it was raining so hard, it was a hot summer's day, and it just suddenly started raining, and the rain didn't stop, and then these other people in there, when they realised we'd walked all the way from the station, they took pity on us and gave us a lift back. It's one of the very few times I've actually cut a walk short, but um, it had been about three miles of walking in heavy rain. So I never know who that person was, but I'm very grateful for them. So that was quite um, a bit of a unique visit, that one. Oh, now I've answered one of my own questions. It's got two stamps. I said Stourhead had got two stamps because there's effectively two properties in one. Have a look at that. Cotteel Mill. So that's the mill where I just told you that story about what happened with the scones and the rain. So yeah, Cotteel's got two stamps, Stourhead's got two stamps, Cloven Battlefield has two stamps, but it's really only one place. It just, so I said that was in the last one. They said, which one do you want? And I said, I'll have both, because um, I'm like that. Just wanted to, you know, decorate the passport even more. So yeah, so Cotteel's got two, um, one for the mill and one for the house. Stourhead's got one for the garden, one for the house. Are there any others? Does anyone know? Any others got two stamps? My next one, now this was on the way back from that holiday down in Plymouth, um, was Compton Castle. Quite a small property, um, so a castle, there wasn't really many grounds there, so I went there, explored the grounds, and then the next one is Bradley Manor. Now, there's one thing I always find a bit odd about Bradley Manor, is in the National Trust, in the, in the handbook, they just call it Bradley, but to me it's Bradley Manor. Why do they drop the manor? Like I've noticed, they don't do it with many, they do it with Lime Park as well. It's, it's In the handbook, it just says Lime. Why, why is it just Lime? Or why is it just Bradley? Why not Lime Park or Bradley Manor? 
There's the Great Western Steam Locomotive of the Manor Class, number 7802. It's called Bradley Manor, it's not called Bradley. So, you know, maybe there's a very good reason that I'm missing something. But if anyone knows why, why have they dropped the manor bit, uh, please do tell me. But other than that, it's, it's a lovely property. It's a, it's a whitewashed manor house, it's near Newton Abbott. I remember my dad and I, we walked down into Newton Abbott and um, I remember being delighted when I saw a larder in Newton Abbott because those who watched some of my other videos know there's a larder weaver that sometimes features. But anyway, that's, that's a different story. So yeah, I did uh, Compton Castle and Bradley Manor in one day. And where else did I go? Another visit. This one I did go to in my larder. There's no Henry's Adventure video. It's Avebury Stone Circle. Now I remember what happened that day. I went to Western Supermare to visit the Miniature Railway because it was going to close soon, which was a real shame, but I wanted to have my trip. So I went to drove to Western Supermare, had a go on the Miniature Railway, and on the way back I stopped at Avebury and visited Avebury Stone Circle. Um, so that, that's where we're visiting. There's also that Avery Manor House. And what's good about Avery Manor House is it's one of the newer ones. When I say newer, I mean as in more recently the National Trust have um, opened it to the public. And there's signs everywhere, not saying please don't touch, saying please touch. So they encourage you, because the stuff isn't historic, it's, it's replicas. You're allowed to pick everything up. When I say everything, I might be quite exaggerating a bit, but you're allowed to pick most things up and have a look. So it's quite funny, it says please do touch. In fact, I think the stewards in the room will tell you off if you don't pick stuff up and touch it. So yeah, do if you want to get really hands on at the National Trust property, Avery Manor is your place for you. Now this next one, I'm not going to try and pronounce it. Must have a go, but um, my Welsh viewers might, will, will probably correct me. Tui Isaf Bethjel. Bethjel is on the Welsh Highland Railway, which I haven't been on yet. Should have done, but I just haven't got around to doing it. Um, it's a small cottage, it was a shop. Um, I said in the last one about National Trust working holidays, I was on a National Trust working holiday and we were doing various jobs up in Snowdonia and we stopped at Bethjell that, that day on the way back. So I went and got the property, I went and visited um, the stone of Bethjell. I won't tell the story, I'll, I'd like to tell the story if I actually go there again and do a video, but I visited the church, used to be a priory, went to the station, saw a Garrett pass through, and I got this down. Oh no, next property, leaving Wales, going back to the south, is Winchester City Mill. Right in the middle of Winchester, the city in Hampshire, is the city mill. You can go and see it. It's a working mill. I have done a video uh, more recently at um, Never Alderley Mill, so you can have a look at the link on the screen now, see that video. So yeah, Winchester City Mill um, was the next one. Then another one I've also done a video at more recently is Shugborough. Shugborough Hall in Staffordshire. At the time of getting this stamp, it was when the house was National Trust, but it was run by the local council. Um, it's not done like that anymore. It's, it's all National Trust. Non, I remember you had to pay to park there. I think I think this you had to pay, even if you remember. Didn't bother me. I just parked on Cannock Chase and walked there. A long, long walk. But I like a long, long walk. Um, and then I kind of walked around the canals and made my way back out. So yeah, Shugborough Hall. Interesting property. It's got the West Coast Main Line running through it, which um, I, I quite liked. Um, whenever I travel on the West Coast Main Line, I always enjoy passing through Shugborough Hall and um, seeing the estate. There's a decorated bridge to hide the railway and stuff. So I'll have to go there and do more videos at some point. The next one. This is the only National Trust property I'm aware of that you can get to by tram, like easily by tram. It's more than Hall Park in South London. And you can literally step off a tram. Um, forgotten the name of the stop, but it's coming on screen now. And you can walk straight into Morden Hall Park. Now, Morden Hall Park is free for everyone to visit. It was part of the agreement that it was free for everyone to visit. The house isn't open to the public, but you can go there, you can visit it. Um, so, as I say, it's, as far as I'm it's the only National Trust, certainly the only National Trust property you can see trams from. There might be others near a tram stop, although I'm not sure. But anyway. Um, the River Wandle flows through the site. The River Wandle is a fast flowing river in South London. It joins the Thames up at Wandsworth and there was a lot of mills on it because it was such a fast flowing river. Now at um, Morden Hall Park they've got a corkscrew and um, hydroelectric generating hydroelectricity from the corkscrew so you know that is free for everyone so do go and visit it. If you have a London travel card you can get there very easily get the district line down to Wimbledon jump on the tram or get a train down to Croydon and jump on the tram. 
and the trams in London are good fun as well. Oh, now going from London to somewhere really completely different, it's Karakari in Northern Ireland. It's it's this um, wobbly stoic, wobbly uh, rope bridge from across to an island um, off the Northern Irish coast. I mean, the Northern Irish coast is amazing. It's something you've you've got to do um, at some point. I think everyone in their life should see the Northern Irish coast. So we went there. Now, there's probably there's no prizes for guessing where I went next. Giant's Causeway. Um, fascinating place. Um, there's various legends as to how it was built. Um, I won't talk too much about that now. I think I'd have to go there again. I've been there twice in my life. I'd love to go there again um, and do Northern Ireland, visit the miniature railways and the railways in Northern Ireland. Um, so, yeah, we'll do Northern Ireland in the future. Ah, now we have a Scottish one. I thought there'd be another Scottish one. I said in my last one about that. It's the Tenement House in Glasgow. Tenements were houses built, well, obviously in Glasgow and Edinburgh and other Scottish big towns and cities. They were, you know, where there were blocks of flats, basically. But this one was um, never modernised, so it was. they realised it was worth saving. A lot of them have been demolished, replaced by tower blocks, which have then been demolished, replaced by more modern ones. There's a lot, you will see a lot of tenements in Glasgow, especially Glasgow, still standing that have been modified and made into luxury um, housing. But this tenement house, you can see it as it would have been when they were new, so that's worth visiting. Um, I went there by Metro, one of few, apart from the London ones, you can get to by Metro. I can't remember the name of the stop um, off the top of my head, but yeah, I went to that one on, on the Clockwork Orange, Glasgow subway. Okay, next one, interesting one, the Town Walls Tower. That's in Shrewsbury. It's not open very often, it's only open a few days a year. It's run by the staff from the nearby Attingham Park. Um, I think it's like three weekends a year it's open. So I went there. It's probably the smallest National Trust garden I've been in, but like I say, they're all fascinating. They're all worth visiting. I don't think it matters, you know, whether it's a huge country estate or just a small town walls tower. I, love, I just really enjoy going to them. The next one's Dudmarston Hall. So not too far from there. Uh, Dudmarston Hall is um, so it's one of the National Trust places in Shropshire, it's on the banks of the River Severn. If you do certain walks along the estate, you can see the Zen Valley Railway. So, you know, well worth a visit. It's near Bridge North. Oh, now next one, the Holy Austin Rock House. That is one like no other. It's at Kinver, which is, it's actually in Staffordshire. Staffordshire is a very strangely shaped county, it's a very long county, and there's a dog link that goes around, sort of down the back of Birmingham. So Kinver in Staffordshire, there's Kinver Edge, but in the edge is these rock houses, houses in the rock. Um, there's also a miniature railway in Kinver, so at some point I should go and do a Henry's Adventure video on both. But yeah, the, the rock houses, they are really quite fascinating. Um, where have we got next? Oh, Lime Park. And it's interesting to understand, but it does say Lime Park, but as I was saying, in the book they just call it Lime, which I don't know. Maybe there's a very good reason, but I don't know. If anyone knows, comment tell me. Lime Park um, is probably more known, not so much for what it was, but for what it ended up, for its um, basically playing the exterior role of Pemberley in Pride and Prejudice. Um, there's the very famous scene of Mr Darcy, you know, coming out of the lake. At, um, at the... In fact, when I went to Lime Park, there was a giant moral of Mr Darcy in the lake, just to sort of remind everyone what happened there. I have a feeling with that series of Pride and Prejudice, the... Interior was filmed at Sudbury Hall, but the exterior was filmed at Lime Park. So, yeah, Lime Park, I've been there a few times. I've been done the wider estate walk. I, part, I, I got the train to Disley from Manchester, and I walked up to Lime Park, had a coffee in their tea room, because it's outside the Bay Barrier, and then I carried on walking up over the top of the hill and back down to Disley. Um, but that is a very, that was like a seven mile walk. But, you know, do go to Lime Park. Brilliant place, especially if you like driving visitors. Next one is Sunnycroft. Now this is in Telford, it's a Victorian gentleman's house in Telford, so it's one of the urban properties. Um, to me it's an ideal home. If I had the money, I'd love to live somewhere like, I wouldn't want to live somewhere huge like one of the massive stately homes, but somewhere the size of Sunnycroft, you know, I could have a miniature railway and stuff around the grounds. It's kind of like, a bit like 
could say it's my dream home maybe. So yeah, I like Sunnycroft, it's a nice property. And then another one, I, this is also one of my favourite ones, it's Whittick Manor. Which isn't too far from there, it's on the edge of Wolverhampton. It's um, a mock Tudor house. William Morris, the, um, there's two William Morrises involved with National Trust. Um, one's cars, one, probably the more famous one, is um, basically he, he did um, artwork um, which was then produced as wallpapers, as, as um, curtains, etc. Um, William Morris never went to Whittick Manor but they ordered a lot of his products for Whittick Manor. So it's an urban one in quite a nice part of Wolverhampton, lovely gardens. I then did a walk along the canal and back along an old railway, I remember it was getting soaked. Um, but luckily Whittick Manor hadn't closed, so I went back in and had a cup of tea and warmed up. The next one is Island Hall. Island Hall is one I've since been to and done in Henry's Adventures video, if you have a look at the link on the screen now, you'll be able to see exploring the gardens. Island Hall is also a youth hostel, so I stayed a night there, and I remember I went to Crouch the next day, Crouch Tramway Village. Um, most of the original Island Hall has been demolished, but the gardens are quite fascinating, and you can also walk from there to Dovedale. And then the next one, this is an interesting one, Birmingham Back to Backs. Um, so I think it's the only Back to Backs in Birmingham that survive. You ha I think you can't just turn up, you have to book this one. They do tours, they take you around the Back to Backs and you see you know, how people would have lived. So it's sort of seeing how the other end of society lived. Um, you know, a lot of them are the bigger stately homes, but it's also quite nice. They do cover you know, some of the, the not so rich people. Oh no, here we have another Scottish one. I remember on this, this trip, um, they didn't seem to have a stamp, but I went to Gleelston Garden in Card Ross, which is amazing, worth a visit. It's not huge, but it's a lovely garden. The next day I went to Carlisle's birthplace. It's in a village called Ecclefecken. The West Coast Main Line actually passes very close to the village, and Thomas Carlisle wasn't very happy about it. He didn't like new things, such as railways. So I went to his birthplace in, in Ecclefecken, and then, that week, I was in London. And I'd been told the story of Thomas Carlyle, how he grew up, and it just made sense. Seeing as the National Trust have got his house in London, basically go and hear chapter two. I went to Carlyle's house in London. And um, got them both on one page. So I got all of Thomas Carlyle, his two houses, on one page. So I'm quite happy with that. So. I, even, I'm not saying you could, it's so easy to do it in that way, it was just the way circumstances worked. I hadn't been to Carlisle's house and I thought, right, well now really is the best time to go this year because I've literally just been to his birthplace. Now another one, one of probably one of my favourite ones, Bidolf Grange. I've done a few videos there and it's amazing Bidolf Grange. You, you can go around the world in the garden. It's not a huge garden but there's so much packed into it. It, it, it it's like the follies they've got there it's it's just amazing you've you if there's one property everyone should go to at one point in their life it's got you've got to go to Bidolf Grange you know it, it it's it's an amazing property you can't the house isn't national trust you can go in one room but yeah do do visit Bidolf Grange oh now the next one castle ward That's in Northern Ireland. I, I spent a week there, did another one of these National Trust working holidays. And again, it was great fun because in the evenings you could just go for walks around the estate. I loved it there. Um, I, was, I wouldn't say I explored every inch of the estate, but I explored a lot of the estate during my free time. Um, National Trust working holidays, I think, were all cancelled in 2020 for fairly obvious reasons. I haven't been on one for a while. Um, I just haven't had the time. But perhaps one day I'll go on one again. It's... Um, I, they are, if you're on a holiday it's a bit different and you're prepared to sort of, you know, do a bit of physical work, I recommend them. They're good fun. You, you always meet very interesting people, you know, so do, do, if you don't know what to do, do try out a National Trust working holiday when they're running again. So yeah, that was a Castle Ward. And as I was saying in an earlier video about National Trust holidays and on day off, you often will go to another National Trust property. It's not a set rule that you go to one, you sort of all have a chat. Some people go in their own car and they might want to do their own thing. They took us to Mount Stewart. Which um, we, we actually drove around Strangford Lock and stopped at various other historic sites. We went to Mount Stewart and um, the house had a lot of work being done on it, so we didn't really go in the house but explored. The, the gardens were fascinating, I remember exploring the gardens. Um, 
Our uh, next one coming back across onto mainland Britain. The Greyfriars, it's in Worcester. Um, a funny thing happened that day with Greyfriars. It was, I had a West Midlands Day Ranger ticket. I started in Northampton. And the reason I wanted to go to Northampton was I wanted to see the Greyfriars bus station, which um, is, oh, I'll have to put a picture in. Here it is. That was Greyfriars bus station, about a week before they blew it up. It was the most ridiculous thing. I mean, I sort of admire it, but it was just so over the top. It was so big and vast. Um, Kevin MacLeod called it the mouth of hell and that name stuck. They blew it up. Um, so it was basically a bus station with a car park and then offices above it. I wanted to see it before they blew it up. And then with the West Midlands Day Ranger ticket, had I got on the train, went to Birmingham, from Birmingham, went on train to Worcester, and I went to another Greyfriars, a very, very different Greyfriars, a Tudor house in the centre of Worcester. And um, so I went to two completely different Greyfriars in one day, but you can't do that anymore. You can't go to the Greyfriars in Northampton. Not that you probably want to. It's only people like me who like brutalist buildings. But yeah, do go to this Greyfriars, Greyfriars in Worcester, um, and go up the cathedral and stuff. They do quite a lot of steam charters to Worcester. Why not go on a steam charter from London? Um, London Paddington travel up to Worcester, you could go to the Greyfriars and go to Worcester Cathedral. Our next one is Speak Hall in Liverpool. Right next to John Lennon Airport. Now how did I get there? I think I, I was doing Mersey Rail bashing that morning, so basically travelling around on the Mersey Rail for fun. I went down to Hunts Cross, came back. To Liverpool South Parkway. I think I got a bus to someone. I said to the bus driver, I really don't know the area, but do you go any if you go anywhere near Speak Hall? And he said, Yeah, we do. He, he said, I'll t and I think he stopped on the middle of a roundabout because it was the nearest place. He, it was quite quiet, there was no traffic on the road, and he just stopped in the roundabout. I said, There you go, mate. You know, um, so I walked there on the way back. I then walked along the Mersey. And um, I can't remember where I got back on the Mersey Rail, but I, I basically walked back. It might have been back to Liverpool South Parkway. So quite a fascinating property. Um, big Tudor house, um, you know, well worth a visit. Lovely grounds, and it's just on the edge of Liverpool. Next one is Buscot Park, where Lord Farringdon lived. It's in Oxfordshire. Um, Quite close, although Swindon's in Wiltshire, I think it's still in Oxfordshire. Quite a long drive that was. That morning I went to Cobbershaw Barn. I remember I made a video there and I made a video. So we've now got to the era. The properties I'm visiting now is since Henry's Adventures has been invented. So I've been making videos. So I went to um, Great Coxwell Barn, made a video there. There wasn't a stamp there. It's an unstaffed property, but you can just go in there. And then, yeah, I went to Buscot Park. Buscot Park's fascinating. So many different gardens. Um, like I say, like all of them, all worth a visit. And then the final one was Goddard's house. Now, Goddard's house, I've made videos there as well. It's it's in Dring Houses, just south of York. So it's, it's, it's in great, the Greater York. I know that's not actually a term, but what I mean is it's, it's in York, a suburb of York. Um, it's where Noel Terry of Chocolate Oranges, Terry's Chocolate, lives. Now the funny thing is with, with this, um, so Terry's have been around for a while. Noel Terry thought, hmm, I need to think of something new, and he invented the chocolate apple. And, you know, it sold, but no one was that bothered, and he thought, hmm, I wonder what else I'd do. He thought, I know what, I'll come up with a chocolate orange. And of course, chocolate orange, everyone knows what a chocolate orange is. So... I remember going around the property, it's, it's quite a modern one, I think it was built you know, in the 19th century, it's got nice gardens, um, backs onto York Racecourse, but I remember when I finished there, the first shop I went into, I went and bought Cherry's Chocolate Orange, so that concludes my passports. Um, my sixth one, which I said I haven't filled up, um, I might as well just quickly tell you where I've been, I've been to Raynham Hall. Into Nuffield Place, Mosley Old Hall, Paycox, Great Coggershall Barn, The Reds House, Hare Hill, Never Audley Mill, Quarry Bank Mill, and then it's empty. So I've got quite a few more properties before this one's filled up. So, some point in the future, um, 
I said in an earlier video, the only years I've not been to new properties was 1997, 2016, 2020. I think in 1997, 2016, I, did, I certainly went to National Trust properties. I was probably just revisited others because, as I said, some people cheat and they get the same. Every time they go to a property, they get a stamp. That's not what you're supposed to do. It's every time you go to a new property. So, yeah, I'm not quite halfway through my sixth passport. Um, if you've been to more than me, I'd love to hear from you. How, how many have you filled up? Do you, or you know, or if you haven't, why don't you start collecting them? Um, like I said, like my girlfriend and I, we went to a few. I said to her one day, I said, right, I think you should have a passport. And, um, you know, you've got a long way to catch me up, but, you know, you can start. So, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little series, me talking about my adventures rather than actually going on an adventure. But um, hopefully you won't have to do any more of these indoor videos from lockdown. All my videos in the future will be out and about. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Thank you very much. From my kitchen table, goodbye.